So the JCPenney Leadership Program was started in 1993 with an endowment from the JCPenney Foundation. We often get asked how connected we are to the JCPenney Corporation and honestly, there is not much of a connection now and certainly not a financial one. Without their generosity that was then matched by the regents, we would not exist, but we have no formal financial ties going forward. We are housed in the College of Business with our own corner office where we have a staff of myself, an office manager and two office fellows. And we also have a conference center and it is a special place and price for our students to connect and get the resources that they need. This started as an honors program in the College of Business that involved into a leadership program. All of the students in Price get a lot of hands-on training in terms of professional development and networking. We just give a little bit more. We have six pillars that revolve around our programming and they include networking, professionalism, scholarship, fellowship, diversity, and philanthropy. I tell my students who do actually do a fair amount of the programming planning that as long as you can connect it to one of those pillars, let's go ahead and get planning. So most of the, again, those organizing and planning is done by the student advisory board. So we have a variety of officers. I like to joke that I'm like the wizard of Oz, kind of behind the scenes. And it's actually additional professionalism training that they do plan these events. For example, we host three campus-wide conferences every year. Everyone's invited, not just on the OU campus, but also out in the community. And an upside to the virtual format that we use this year, we actually had a much broader reach and had people from around the nation join us. In October, we have the Women in Business Leadership Conference. In February, we have the Parker Leadership Conference, which is our active learning conference that involves a case study. And then in April, we have our Alumni Career Conference. And again, these are planned almost completely by students with a little bit of help from me. Saba's position, the Director of Peer Trainers, which she'll talk about the peer training program in more detail in a moment, but they're in charged with training our newest associates. Speaking of associates, we have every major in price represented in the JCPenney Leadership Program and approximately 150 members at maximum capacity. We usually take around 65 graduates every fall, which is when we do our annual membership drive. It's not rolling, it's only once. And I am proud to boast that for the last two semesters, we don't count uh, spring of 2020. I don't think anyone should count that in anything ever. Uh, but in spring of 2019 and then recently, in the fall of 2020, we had a 100% job or grad school placement, which is very, very special. We are more diverse than the Price College of Business as a whole in terms of racial diversity, as well as gender diversity. So in addition to the Director of Peer Trainers, we have a Director of Conferences, as I mentioned, Director of Philanthropy, who helps organize fantastic events. And we also have a Director of Board Fellows. Board Fellows program is something I'm very, very excited about. Obviously, philanthropy is one of our pillars, but with board fellows, we partner with 14 different nonprofit agencies around the metro, and one of our students gets to sit on that board as an ex officio member. So the organization benefits from the perspectives and talent and skill set of these young professionals, and they get the experience of sitting on a board, but also the networking of working with actual professionals out in the business community. As far as we know, we are one of the only undergraduate leadership programs in the nation that offers that opportunity to their students. We also have Director of Associate Development, which is more of our fun events. Uh, we like to say, again, if you can match it to fellowship or professionalism or networking or any of our pillars, go ahead and go for it. And so golf lessons is one of the fun things that we make sure our students are equipped to handle, but also team building exercises like escape rooms, different case study events, and even a game night, which I plan to host Thursday night. So we stay very busy. These students are phenomenal and not a week goes by that I don't wish I could have had something like this in college. I mentioned some of the SAB positions and Sava will talk about peer training, but we also have from our director of programming, distinguished speakers, CEOs from around the nation speak to us. We have lunch and learns and workshops where we build our professional skill set. But we also have things like C-Suite for a day where we get to shadow members of the C-Suite. This is usually in April. And that's a very, everything from Boeing to smaller entrepreneurial efforts and businesses here in Norman. And we also have a study abroad program that I'm happy to teach. I have to say it's hard with work like that. Uh, I also teach a leadership class and then each semester in normal times, we take a corporate view visit to a city in the region to visit alumni there to help build that network but also to visit companies there and help again spread our recruiting reach. 
So these students keep me busy. We provide a lot of opportunities and I'm pretty sure I have the best job at the University of Oklahoma. So I'll let Saba tell you a little bit more about the peer training program that we offer to all candidate associates, which they must complete before they are formally inducted in January. Thank you so much, Bria. So like Bria said, we do have a peer mentor program and that is for every single associate that is accepted into our program, they're assigned a peer trainer. And within that peer trainer group, there's four other candidate associates and they are required to go through five or six sessions that basically work their professional skills and teach them things from you know their LinkedIn profile all the way to what are their strengths and weaknesses, to building their resume, to having a think tank discussion on different business topics that are prevalent in today's society. And once they have completed all of these sessions, then they're officially inducted into our program. Um, along with that, they're also required to volunteer at one of our SAB boards and that, or one of our board fellow boards, my apologies. And with that, they choose a philanthropy and they volunteer with that philanthropy throughout the semester. And then right before induction or at our last org meeting, they will give a presentation about that philanthropy as well as what exactly they did with them. And after that, they're inducted into the program. And in the spring, we then have a mentorship program. And with the mentorship program, it is any new associate is matched with a veteran associate. And that can be on the basis of interests, majors, hometown, anything basically that they have in common so that they can kind of have that one-on-one -on -one connection within the program. Of course, we have lots of different networking opportunities throughout the program, but with the mentor-mentee program, it's a lot more one-on-one -on -one and you also gain that social aspect from it as well. So mentors and mentees are required to meet once a month up until graduation. And that can be anywhere from, you know, going to grab lunch or having a coffee date or even just FaceTiming for, you know, 30 minutes to talk, talk about their day or ask any questions that they have. And that's just really to help build those connections within the program and also bridge the gap between cohorts. In terms of increasing membership, we are always excited to have the best and the brightest in the Price College of Business involved in the JCPenney Leadership Program. However, we take our training and mentoring very seriously, and we understand that without more staff, <laughs> we're not able to provide the best experience for all of our students. So while we might see some growth in the future, I don't think we'll see uh, exponential growth by any means because we really do like our, our close-knit network which means that it is hard to get into. We have about a 33% um, acceptance rate. So we, we like to keep it that way. And we have high standards to the point where once the students get in, they have to maintain high standards each semester. So the tips, processes, and other resources or advice that I would give to college mentoring programs is to make sure you're collecting, excuse me, <laughs> connecting with your alumni. I advise the former organization and again, amazing students who've gone on and graduated and continue to do amazing things. And it's a wasted opportunity that they haven't connected the alumni with the, the students currently in the program. So that's something I would recommend any program do when it comes to mentoring is keep track of your alumni and reach out. I find that people are, are definitely willing to get involved and participate. They just have to be asked. I would also continue to utilize Zoom. Even when we would go to normal, whatever that may look like, it provides so many opportunities to connect with people all over the world and takes away that step of them having to be in the same room. I'm interested if anyone's got one out there in terms of mentoring programs is to find a app that will help us better connect with alumni. After 28 years of graduating phenomenal students, we have an awful lot of alumni out there. Right now we have an alumni group on LinkedIn, which is very helpful. And I recommend that as well to help connect with alumni. But in terms of creating a mentoring program between current associates and alumni, I think an app or something like that would be helpful to match them. There's just so many out there and it's hard to keep track of. So in terms of what we're looking for, if you have any resources like that and how to track meetings, I think that would be really helpful. We can very much train our students to be good mentees but it's on them to continue to build that mentor relationship and keep it alive and college students get busy. So we've done a great job again of the internal mentoring and our candidate associate training program, but it's definitely the alumni networking and mentoring that I would be very interested myself in learning more about.
So as I mentioned earlier, selection for the JCPenney Leadership Program is quite stringent. Our, our reputation tends to precede us. I always have so much pride when I hear the campus tours, especially the price tours, stop point out our office and talk about all the amazing programming that we offer. And I've learned to ask on our application, how did you hear about JCPenney? And often it's the campus tours. So again, makes me feel great knowing that the moment they get to campus, they're thinking about joining the JCPenney Leadership Program. So you have to be a sophomore or a junior to apply. We don't take brand new freshmen and we don't take seniors. Because as I mentioned, it's hard to get in and it's hard to stay in. We have four semesters worth of what we call our tenure requirements. So that's why again, seniors won't be around long enough to complete everything. And so a sophomore or junior have to be in the Price College of Business. I touched on that we're proud to have every major represented and you do have to have a minimum GPA. We have essay questions that you have to answer before on the application. And then we have an interview process. The interview team consists of myself, someone from our faculty steering committee, and someone from leadership within the program. So these students have to be somewhat polished before they can even continue in the program because again, it's a stringent process. And the essay questions revolve around what business leaders do they look up to? What books have they read recently? I wanna make sure that we're selecting lifelong le leaders with a true passion for business. And then in the interview, uh, we always ask a JCPenney specific question. I wanna make sure they've done their research on our program. That's also just a general good life lesson. Know what you're getting yourself into. And then all sorts of questions, again, related to business and personality and challenges that they've overcome. I do the final selections for our program. And so we typically get around 150 applications and we might take 65. That's our max that we usually take. It's the most manageable number for the intensive peer training program that Saba has described. And it is easily the hardest part of my job. Which amazing student will I let into this program? And it's, it's rough. And uh, I always tell sophomores that don't make it in, please, please, please apply again. And recently we had, a, she's now a junior and she was admitted in the fall. It was amazing the growth that she went through after that, that year where she just needed to mature a little bit. So I, I've, I've had some luck with some people I've asked to apply again. And I always offer to meet with students that don't get in to give them feedback on issues with why. We also require letters of recommendation, one from the College of Business if you're a junior, one from the university if you're a sophomore, and then one from someone who, who can speak to your leadership potential. So it could be anything from an employer to uh, the president of an organization you're involved in, things like that. So it takes a fair amount of time. And as I touched on, the program has four semesters worth of tenure requirements. So one of our application requirements is actually you must attend an informational session before you submit your application. I want you to know what you've signed up for. So uh, we, we do that a lot and uh, we'll have, we actually start in April. I believe we've selected our application dates. It opens in the spring. So we can do some info sessions in late spring and then it closes in early to mid September so we can get a couple in when they return. Now that we've all, flexed our ability to have virtual meetings. I'm sure we'll still have some of those. And it also gives students all summer to work on these applications. If you open it and see that I'm asking about a book, go read a book. And I will confess, if someone's on the line, I will look at when they submitted their application. And if they waited 10 minutes before it closes, that's, that's not the kind of person we're looking for, especially when I've literally given you five months to do this. <laughs> uh, it's difficult though, it really, really is. And I, I'm always impressed with, again, the caliber of students that we get, and it is the hardest part of my job. And some students that have not made it in have still been so impressive and have pursued my mentorship that I have mentored them, even though they're not in the JCPenney Leadership Program. So with that, I'll turn it over to Saba, and why don't you tell us a little bit more about the selection for the peer training program and the internal mentorship program. For our peer mentor group, most of them are random unless a specific peer trainer does have a um, new associate that they want in their group. And with that, they'll just, you know, shoot the director of peer trainers an email and they'll just make sure to put that person in their group. But we also want to ensure that everyone is 
you know, socializing and meeting new people within their cohort, as well as making a fair connection with their peer trainer, because that peer trainer is essentially going to be their point of contact for the next few months before they are inducted into the program. And then for the mentor mentee program, everyone that's interested in participating is required to fill out a form. And then we make pairings based on that form, whether it be majors, minors, common interests, hobbies, whether or not they're safe meeting in person or if they wanna meet virtually and just a mix of everything. Um, and just making sure that the people that we put together could potentially be a really good pair for not only mentoring, but also a friendship um, within the program. We actually created the internal mentorship program based on feedback. I love surveys. I want to make sure that we're providing the programming that students appreciate. And what we had heard, and this is a, a great tip for anyone that provides training in any sort of leadership or mentorship program, is that it was very intense of how much help they got. They had a peer trainer they could go to. And then in the spring semester, we were just like, go forth and become a leader. And they didn't really have that instant connection. And so all they knew was that little group that they had gone through the initial peer training program with. So we were so excited to get that started. We've heard great feedback from it. And one thing I've loved about the our training program and how it's built up our mentorship opportunities is that it's provided them with the skills to create their own mentoring relationships from people we connect them with. So for example, we may have a distinguished speaker a local entrepreneur, someone from a major corporation come and speak to the program, but then these students feel confident enough to reach out to them on their own and create their own mentorship relationships. We also are a little old school and we teach handwritten thank you notes. And uh, it's amazing the feedback I get on handwritten thank you notes. Oh, Bria, I haven't, I got a note from your students. I haven't gotten a handwritten note in so long. So <laughs> there's a pro tip for anyone wanting to stand out when meeting new people send those handwritten thank you notes. So I, my dream in terms of the networking that happens with the internal mentorship program is that they build these relationships that when they go out into the business world, wherever they land and whatever industry, that somehow there'll be some big merger that becomes like a JCPenney business baby. And it's all because they networked and mentored internally. And so we're, we're so excited to see how this new reality of the Zoom network helps us to increase our, our networking and mentoring opportunities because oddly enough, you'd think it'd be the opposite, but over the past year, we've had more alumni reach out to us to, to reconnect and get engaged than either of the other two years that I've been in this office. So I don't know if we're all just reflecting on the good times we had in college or, or what, or, or that I like to think this, this format has increased opportunities and made it easier to connect. So I, I'm looking forward to keeping this tool in our, our, our toolbox for sure. We do encourage internships. It's actually one of our tenure requirements, uh, study abroad or internship, because we want our students to be well-rounded. I like to say we have the, the most well-rounded students at the University of Oklahoma because they're well-rounded in terms of the professional skills that they're learning in the classroom, but also the professional skills they're learning in the real world, and as well as appreciation for diversity and philanthropy. So internships are something that are highly coveted in the College of Business, which was one of those things I had to learn being a political science major. I had some internships, but this process is completely different. And it's very different by major as well, which I have noticed has caused some stress among uh, some majors. For example, accounting and finance, they get recruited a year and a half before their internship even begins. I can't even imagine making that kind of commitment at their age, but they do it all the time. But then you'll have our marketing or our entrepreneurship. You know, that's kind of a, a wild card where it's just not a, they'll get internships, but I, I see them stressed out more because there is no formalized process. They have to be a lot more boots on the ground, which is very much where we come in. And why my job, I think, is to network on a higher level not just with individuals, because for example, I will cold call companies and say, I would love to hear from you. And not only is it a great opportunity for us to learn about you, but it's a great opportunity for you to recruit top talent from the University of Oklahoma. And sometimes I'll get responses, and sometimes I won't, but it, it, it consistently builds. We have a list of, it's one of my favorite lists, each year, new businesses we've connected with. And I love to see that grow. And I, my favorite thing, which actually 
gave me a fair amount of pressure when I started in this role was our big corporate partners would say, oh, we just love recruiting from JCPenney. They're those well-rounded professionals that we want. They're very smart, but they're also very professional. Uh, they value diversity and philanthropy. And I was like, oh, I better not screw this up. And so it's been fun to watch it continue to evolve. And I, I like to think that we have improved on that and also expanded our reach. I've connected with, for example, chambers of commerce. I don't know if students realize what a chamber of commerce is, but they're very important in communities and in the business world. I'm looking forward to creating a panel where we connect with the Native American Chamber of Commerce, the African American Chamber of Commerce, and, and see how that works. So like right now we're connecting with another organization I advise, LGBTQ and business, the employee resource groups. So I want students to know about these things. And I think that's why we focus on diversity so much. When I, it's one of our pillars. And when I joined, I, I asked the question, is diversity one of our pillars so we can say diversity is one of our pillars? Like, what are we doing with it? And so we've really tried to create opportunities for students to learn from their peers who are different than them, because more likely than not, these students are so high achieving, they often don't stay in Oklahoma and they're gonna work with people different than them. And I want them to have been there. I want, you know, when someone men mentions a Jewish holiday to be like, I know what that is, or, you know, a, LGBTQ term, they, they know what it is. And so it's it's been fun to watch these students kind of expand their own horizons. And the internships are really important. Um, I maintain the corporate relationships. And so I'll always send a quick note like, hey, one of my students applied, they check out her resume, you, you, you're not gonna wanna miss it. We'll have uh, businesses send their job and internship announcements to us before it goes to the full university. And uh, the pressure again, I think Shell was one of them. Oh, well, we always look for JCPenney on applications from the Price College of Business. It's like, this is the real deal. So uh, it's been fun to, to help that grow and create more opportunities. And they always think big companies. I've also tried to have them focus on what Oklahoma does offer. I mean, I'm, I don't wanna selfishly keep them here, but I think too quickly, we have an idea of what our future should look like and we may not see the opportunities right in front of us. So I try to provide balance in that aspect. So, and again, the C-suite for a day is our a week long where they pick one day where they connect with someone in the C-suite from a wide variety of companies. And I've seen great connections and internship offers come from that. So lots of opportunities. We're very, very proud of, I think that's probably my favorite statistic in JCPenney is our, our job and grad school placement rate. It just doesn't get any better than 100%. And our average salary is higher than everyone else's in the Price College of Business as well. So I'd say personally, um, I've actually told a few people this week that have reached out to me uh, that are looking to apply for chair next year. And they've, they've just asked like, you know, how do you like it, blah, blah, blah. And I think I've started every email with being the chair this year has honestly been the most rewarding experience so far in college. Um, I have really grown myself both like professionally, both personally, um, just in every aspect really. And it's really uh, challenged me to push myself in, um, again, both professionally and personally. I really wasn't even intent on intending on applying for chair when I did. And I just got so much encouragement from people in the program um, and things like that, that I was like, well, okay, like, I don't think I'm cut out for it, but we'll see. And then once I got it, I was like, well, this is, this is awesome. Like, I'm going to take it and run with it. And so I think um, really what it's done for me has just been obviously the growth, um, the connections through the National Millennial Community have been incredible. Um, and then not to mention just the connections within JCPenney. Um, in this position, I obviously get to talk to a lot more people than just any other associate would do. Like a couple of weeks ago, I actually got to moderate a call with the former uh, president of the Houston Texans, Jamie Roots. And I was the one moderating it, but it was there were questions sent in from everybody. Of course, we had an agenda and all that, but the way it was going, I really just felt like I was having a conversation with Mr. Roots. Like it felt like it was just the two of us and like, it was just such a neat experience. And in times like that, I obviously have to learn how to like step it up and how to like really like focus in, how to um, represent myself and the program really well. 
Um, so I'd say that's pretty much what the program has done for me. Molly also sits on, or she's one of our representatives to the National Millennial Community. You wanna talk about mentorship. This program is phenomenal. When I first started, Bill Imada reached out to me, called and emailed because he'd heard about, you know, how do I find a business student at the University of Oklahoma? Somebody recommended the JCPenney Leadership Program. And so when he reached out, I it just sounded too good to be true. I was like, okay, what, what is this? I don't know. So I followed up and it was free to join. And so what it is, is they created a nonprofit that connects millennial and now Gen Z. They're the, the main generation in college. Gen Z students to professionals in really big companies because they noticed a disconnect. They noticed that some of our elders in the business world had uh, assumptions and stereotypes of younger generations, but vice versa as well. And so Molly has had the opportunity to participate in many of these calls where it's an hour long call. Half of it is the executive asking questions of the students. And then the other half is the students get to ask questions of the company. Bill Imada always likes to give the example of when they spoke to Starbucks, they actually pivoted a little bit on their blonde roast uh, marketing after talking to a younger generation. So I know they're listening. And they also offer site visits, kind of like what we do, but much bigger. They'll also send internship opportunities to us. And if I, I'm on the, the mailing list, and so if there's any that I are in business, I send those out to our program as well. Which I'll mention one more thing about internships. We had a lot of students lose internships last summer, not surprisingly, and by no fault of their own. But many of them really panicked about how that was going to impact their future. And all I could tell them was that literally the entire world is experiencing this right now. So it may be a setback, but it's like a universal setback. And so I challenge them to use your time wisely. If you don't have an internship, how are you developing yourself? Because I, if I, you know, I did ask that uh, during our interview process in the fall, what did you do over the summer while you were in lockdown? You know, if you played video games all day, I want to know that you found ways to serve your community and that you continue to develop yourself. You found these cool new podcasts and, and, and whatnot. So always trying to help them see that it's not just a line on your resume that matters. It's, it's about professional development and networking and service as well. So that was something I was very happy to bring to JCPenney. We have two representatives and OU, and I guess I should clarify, they partner with a university in every state. And OU is Oklahoma's representation, and JCPenney is OU's representation. We, we, it's just phenomenal that we managed to get this national opportunity because of our reputation. Someone said, oh, you need to, JCPenney, so you need to talk to. So it's, it's really exciting. And when I first got here, we were planning the 25th anniversary of our program. So that was my first job. Congratulations. Welcome. Plan our 25th anniversary. Ah. But it helped me learn a lot about the evolution of the program and what each director has added. And it was a lot of, it was like a real challenge. I mean, what am I going to add? What am I going to be known for? How could I possibly improve this program? I like to think I've added a few things and uh, I'm not going anywhere. I, I really enjoy this position and I love getting to work with these students. You know, there's a lot of negativity out in the world and a lot of unknowns for the future. But what I do know, 100% certainty, is that these future leaders that I get to work with are going to change the world and leave it better than they found it. And that's what keeps me smiling. So best job on campus.